Hey guys, Chris from Adapt Solution here, and in this video, I'm going to show you the solution for question 3 from the May 2023 PUA Paper 2. If you want to see the solutions to the other questions on this paper, I'm going to put a card up there and a link in the description below. So be sure to check those out as well. And with that said, let's get into the question. Okay, so question 3 says the following information is available for Chevron Manufacturing Company. Now, we have a whole list of stuff here clearly geared towards a manufacturing account. Now, I'm not going to read through all of these things right away. What I'm going to do, I'm going to scroll down to the next part of the question because they're, they're little theory parts first. Um, we're going to answer that first. And then we're going to go into the manufacturing account, right? So, one sec. So, it says use the information from the table on page 12 to answer the following questions. So, in A part 1, they want us to identify two examples of direct costs used in the manufacturing of the product. And in part two, identify three examples of indirect costs used in the manufacturing of the product. Okay, so let me go back up to the table and we pull out those costs. All right. So if you need a tutorial on manufacturing accounts and direct versus indirect costs, I'm going to put a card up there and a link in the description. So be sure to check that out as well. Right. And I have a bunch of other possible questions and solutions available here. So you can check that playlist there too. Now, um, direct costs, as we know, basically direct materials, direct labor, and there's other direct costs. Now, they only ask for two. So again, raw material and that's the factory wages, right? 60% of the factory wages are direct. Okay, cool. So, of course, we listen at it, right? So, we have raw materials, factory direct wages, and royalties, right? Now, there was royalties across here. So, royalties are amounts paid to the owner of the intellectual property and are considered direct because without those payments, you would not be able to even produce the item, right? Much less sell it. Now, for indirect costs, again, you have indirect materials, indirect labor, and overheads, stuff like rent, factory power and a whole sort of stuff. So let's see what I pulled out here. So we have factory indirect wages. We also have rates and insurance and general expenses. All right now that had to be a portion between the factory and the admin. Right? You mean, let me see. Office and factory. Yeah. Okay, cool. Okay. So the next part they want us to do is the full manufacturing account. So give me, give me one sec. Let me pull up my form. Right? right. So again, if you need to check out that tutorial before you check out the solution, go to the description, click on that. I do step by step. I don't give their whole format one time. I build it up from just one or two items, maybe three, and then build it up piece by piece. It makes it a lot more digestible, right? Anyhow, so let's take a look at this question solution. So of course, head up properly. Chevron Manufacturing. Manufacturing account for the year ended 30th April 2023. So we're going to start with the direct costs, of course, and we're going to start with the raw materials. Right, so we have cost of raw materials consumed. We're going to start with the opening inventory, which you can see is twenty-three thousand dollars. We have to add any purchases, which we're seeing as three hundred six. But do we have any carriage in or returns out? I'm seeing carriage in of two thousand. I'm not seeing any returns out. Three hundred six and two gives us three hundred eight. When you add three hundred eight to twenty-three, you're going to get three thirty-one. That's the cost of raw materials available for use. From that, you have to subtract your closing inventory of raw material, which is 33,000, which will give us, I think, 298 as the cost of raw materials consumed. Now, our factory wages, it says 60% of the factory wages are direct and the rest are indirect, total being 123. So we find 60% of 123, which gives us 738. And as I mentioned before in the previous part of the question, the royalties, 17,000, are direct because without those, we would not have permission to use whatever intellectual property or designs that we had to use to produce these goods. Adding those together, those three items give us a prime cost of $388,800. Next, we have to add the factory overheads or indirect costs. So we could start with the indirect labor. So if 60% was direct, the remainder of 40% was indirect. Right. Next, I'm seeing rates and insurance, which you can see across here. Now, they told us here, rates and insurance have to be apportioned 4 to 1 between the factory and the office. What do we do with a ratio? 4 to 1, we add 4 and 1 and get 5. And then put each number, 4 and 1, separately over that 5 as like a common denominator. So we're going to split that 45,000 into a 4 fifths to the factory and 1 fifth to the office. 1 fifth of 45 is 9, 9 by 4 is 36,000. Hence, you're seeing 36,000 there. Then we have general expenses. Now, I'm seeing 3,500 to be a portion of the office and the remainder of the factory. So, 14,000 is the total value. Take out 3,500 from that, giving us 10,005. Adding up those three things is a total factory overheads. Adding that to the prime cost gives us the production cost incurred. 
And we have to adjust for work in process. The value at start is 14, we add that. The value at end is 29,000, we subtract that. And the final figure, the cost of goods manufactured is 469,500. Okay, so that's B part one. So we have B part two and C to take a look at now. Okay, so B part two says calculate the net sales figures. So back up in the information for, for the end, it's 30th April 2023. Sales revenue is 658,500. Well, we have returns and was of 1,600. So the calculate net sales is simply the difference between the two, right? So 658,500 minus 1,600 is 656,900. Long story short. Now, let's take a look at the next part of the question. So Siobhan, the owner, paid 2300 for insurance. This amount covered 1200 insurance premium on Siobhan Manufacturing Company and the 1100 insurance premium on Siobhan's family house. Oh, no, 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 no. Now, the accountant credited the bank account with 2300 debited insurance with 12 and debited drug with 1100 So identify the accounting principle applied by the accountant in this transaction. So that has to do with the separate entity concept, right? Let me explain what's going on, right? So Siobhan took 2300 some of which was for the business expense insurance, and some was for his personal expense. Any money, any resource the owner takes for his personal use or her personal use is classified as drawings. Now, again, the business entity and the owner are separate legal entities, and as such, they also have separate accounting records. That is the general gist of the separate entity or business entity concept, right? The accounts of the owner and the business must be kept separate. The, the owner and the business are not the same entity, okay? So the accounting principle identified is the separate entity or business entity concept. And the last part of the question, the accountant did not make any entries in the accounting records for orders received for goods to be supplied in the next financial year, right? May 13th, 2023. Identify the accounting principle the accountant has applied. But my guess here is that this is the accruals concept of revenue recognition, right? So, what's going on here? Why did the accountant not recognize the orders? He didn't make any entries for these orders received for goods to be supplied in the next financial year, right? Because the goods are to be supplied on May 13th, 2023, right? That is the next financial year. So it means that we're not going to earn that revenue until next year. As such, there's no reason for it to be included in our books now, right? They said we received orders. We didn't receive payment. They didn't pay us and say, hey, we're paying you now for goods we're going to get next year. There was no payment involved. We just received an order. Okay, this order is for when? Next year? Okay, cool. We'll deal with that next year. All right, so that's the accruals concept or the revenue recognition principle, which means revenue is recognized when it is earned, right? And the accruals concept says, well, something similar, right? Revenue should be recognized in the period in which it is earned, okay? And that's about it for this question. Okay, guys, so there you have it. That's the solution for question three from the May 2023 POA paper two. If you have any further questions on anything in it, please feel free to let me know in the comment section below. I want to have a chance I'll get back to it. If you want to check out any more videos, I'm going to put some cards up here. Don't forget to subscribe and be sure to check out my website where you'll find a few interesting free PV animals. And as per usual, guys, thank you so much for watching. Take care of yourselves and I'll see you next time. Bye.